If you're looking for the rest of the videos in this series, please go to elithecomputerguy.com to see my full catalog of videos. Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to create an infrared obstacle avoidance Arduino vehicle with an array, an array of infrared sensors. So previously we created an obstacle avoidance vehicle using an infrared sensor and we used one single sensor. The problem that you will see if you do that project is because it only has one single sensor. It really does not understand the environment that it's in. And so basically what happens is if there's something right in front of the vehicle, it will turn. Uh, as we've programmed it to do. But if it does something like, let's say it's coming up to the to at an angle uh, to an obstacle, the problem is, is, is since the sensor isn't being triggered, it would then just start running along the edge of the obstacle until something triggers it. So basically the issue is, is when you have only one single sensor, then you only have one input point for the vehicle for it to know what the world around it is like. And so that's why it's valuable when you're creating these little autonomous vehicles to create an array of sensors. When we're talking about an array of sensors, we're talking about multiple different sensors. So there are multiple different inputs so that then the Arduino vehicle can have reactions based off of multiple sensors, not uh, simply a single one. So what we've done here is we've created a, a, an array of a three infrared sensors for this particular project, this particular vehicle. Uh, we've, we've put one in the, in the front, just like we did before. And then what we actually did is we put then two on the sides. So there's there's one for the right side, there's one for the left side. So what's going to happen is we're going to code this Arduino vehicle. So if it comes up to an object and it detects it, it will turn away. But then also, if it's coming up to an object where the first sensor doesn't detect anything, but it's going to hit the object on the side, now these infrared, the side infrared sensors will be able to detect that. And based off of that, the vehicle will be able to make a reaction. So that's why it's valuable to have an array of sensors on a vehicle. And with that, let's go over to the workbench so I can show you the functional components of this project. Then I'll show you the code and then I'll show you how this actually works in real life. So these are the main functional components for this particular project. Again, at this point, you should have jumper wires, you should have screws, you should have separators, you should have all of those things so you can figure out how best to build this vehicle for your specifications. But these are the mo main components that are required in order to make this work. So again, we're using the FeeTech uh, vehicle platform. This is the platform that I like making personal projects with. Uh, one of the main reasons is because it has this little motor controller board, the two channel SM controller. What this does is this allows you to interact with your electric motors as if they are continuous servo motors. I like the size, the power requirements, everything uh, else with this. And so that's what we're basically using for the vehicle. Obviously we're using two small motors here and we're using the two tires that come with this particular platform. Past that, we're then using an Arduino Uno board. Again, you should be able to use almost any Arduino board for this project. We're just using the Arduino Uno. If you use a different board, um, it, it should work the same, but you know, kind of one of those things. Uh, just verify. Uh, then past that, uh, we need a little, uh, one of these little micro breadboards because now we have a number of different sensors that are going to need both five volt and ground. So your electric motors need five volt and ground. And now you have three sensors that need five volt and ground. So we're going to use this little tiny breadboard in order to split the ground and the five volt connection so that we can power everything. Uh, then past that, we just have these uh, three. You know, these are the basic uh, infrared proximity sensors. Uh, they should cost you a dollar or two if you pick them up from Amazon. Frankly, I buy them by the 10 pack. And so all we need is three of these. When you're looking at it, you're going to be needing the three pin infrared sensors. So this has VCC, this has voltage going in. The middle is ground, and then the uh, the other side is for the signal. That comes out, so you need those. And again, since we're doing an autonomous vehicle here, I will be using my nifty little, uh, little battery pack that I use. Again, so you can plug the vehicle into this, and then it will run around, and it doesn't have to be tethered to your uh, computer. So with that, let's take a look at the actual vehicle itself. And so, yay, this is our... <laughs> 
<laughs> cool little vehicle. So, uh, as before, we've attached the Arduino board to the top. Again, I've used little separators, little screws there. Uh, screwed that down. Uh, again, we have the motor control board that is screwed to the bottom. This is, again, why I like this particular vehicle platform, because the, uh, the control board is able to get screwed to the bottom and it's kind of out of the way. So that's there. And then the additional components to this are now the three sensors. So we have the forward sensor, uh, as we had in the other project, and then we have a sensor both for the left and the right. Um, one thing you're going to have to be thinking about when you build these projects is simple things such as what is your sensor placement going to be? Again, this Arduino vehicle can only respond when the sensors actually detect something. So do you put the sensors up front? Do you put the sensors on the side? Should you put sensors in the back? Remember, it can only react to what it sees. These essentially are its eyeballs. So one of your questions that you have to be asking yourself is basically, again, where is the best place you think uh, to position these particular sensors. So for me, I decided to put them along the side this way. Again, just, just for this simple project, I thought that was a good way to go. Uh, and then you have all the connectors. Uh, this, again, this is how the mini breadboard looks because, again, at this point, uh, you're, for ground and 5 volt, you actually have four. You need four devices connected in, three sensors, uh, plus the, the motors actually only need one input for power. Uh, and so in order to split that off from the Arduino board, that's where you use this little micro breadboard here. You connect everything together and basically... <laughs> Basically, this is this is how it looks. Wire management might, might not be the prettiest, but uh, but this this will actually turn into a functional robot. So with that, let's go over to the computer and, and I can show you the code that we're going to use to drive this thing. So here is the sketch that I am using uh, to drive this particular vehicle. Um, a little bit more complicated than the last sketch, but still relatively simple. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do, again, with this particular controller, this particular controller from Fitec makes the motors seem as if they're continuous servo motors as far as the Arduino is concerned. So because of that, we need to include the servo library. If you're using some other type of motor controller, then you would have to add that that library instead and then configure this based off of whatever motor controller you're using. We are using this uh, and so we, we need the servo, the servo uh, library here. So include and basically this is the servo library. The next thing that we need to do is we need to define the pins uh, for the sensor. So basically we need to say how we are going to reference the pins in this sketch. So we do uh, pound define and so then we're first going to have LIR, so lowercase L I R five. So this means digital pin number five is going to be referenced with L I R. Uh, digital pin six is going to be referenced by R I R, and digital pin seven is going to be referenced by F I R. This simply says, you know, in the sketch, this is what we are going to be calling these digital pins. Then going down here, we're going to have to create the servos uh, so that we can actually interact with them. So this is where we use servo, and then we're going to call the first one L servo and then we're going to create another servo and we're going to uh, call it our servo so this is the left basically this is the left motor and the right motor so this is where we create those motors uh, in the sketch so that so that the sketch knows that it's there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create three different variables. Uh, they're going to be integers. So when we talk about integers, integers are numbers without decimal points. So a float is a, decimal, uh, is a, is a number with a decimal point. 10.10 .10 is a float. One, two, five thousand and two. Those are all integers. Numbers without decimal points are integers. Um, and so we're going to create an integer and then we're going to do L obstacle integer r obstacle integer f obstacle so the value of these variables is what we are going to use to trigger the if else statements if l obstacle is high uh, or low then then you should do x y or z so we have to create those variables here so then we're going to go down and we're actually going to set up the environment that this code is going to run in. Again, since we're dealing with digital pins, we have to say whether they are in input or output mode. Since these are sensors, they will be in input mode. So we say pin mode. We use a pin mode function. We say LIR and we want it to be input. 
pin mode RIR, we're going to put it to input, pin mode FIR, we're going to put it to input. So we're saying on these pins, these digital pins, we want information coming in, not going out. The next thing that we then have to do for the environment is we have to say where the servos are attached to on the board. So this is where we do L servo. So we create an L servo as a motor up here, dot attach to digital pin eight. R servo dot attach to digital pin nine. So when we want to communicate with either of these motors, L servo is on pin eight, R servo is on pin nine. Then what we're going to go do uh, is we're going to come down here. And again, remember with the loop, the loop continues to loop, 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 loop. So what we're going to say is we're going to say L obstacle equals, so left obstacle variable equals digital read function LIR. So what it's going to do is going to digital read from that left IR sensor, and that is going to become the value for L obstacle. R obstacle equals digital read from the right infrared sensor. F obstacle equals digital read from the, the front infrared sensor. So basically what this is doing is it's continuously going through. It's checking the status of the sensors and depending uh, on what the sensor is, it then puts the value of that into the variable. Then all we're going to go down here is we're going to do the if and else if else statement. So what we're going to say is we're going to say if L obstacle equals low. So basically what this means is if the left obstacle uh, value essentially is equaling true here, so low equals true, what we're going to do is we are going to have it turn. So the left servo is going to go at 70 degrees or, or 70 as the speed. So it's going to go forward at the speed of 70 and backward at the speed of 110. If our obstacle equals low. So basically if our obstacle, basically if there's an obstacle there, what we want is the left servo motor, the left motor to go in reverse at that speed of 110 and forward at the speed of 70. Else if, so the front obstacle equals low. So if there's an obstacle there, left servo, we're going to have it go uh, forward at a speed of 80 and it's going to go uh, in reverse at a speed of 100. So one of the things that I did here is what you'll notice is these are 70, 110, and this is 80, 100. So basically if the front sensor uh, fires off is triggered, I want it to turn relatively slowly. If either of the two side sensors are triggered, I want it to move relatively quickly. Now you can code this however you want. You could have it at 115, 120, 190, well not 190, uh, 170, something like that. You can change the speeds here. Why I did this is so when we put this into our little demonstration area, you can see the different speeds. So when it, it runs into something uh, right in front of it, it will turn slowly. When it goes up to something on its side, it will turn faster so I just I, I just want to give you that as a visual reference uh, so that's why I did that and then else so basically what we're saying if the left left if there's no left obstacle if there's no right obstacle if there's no forward obstacle then what we wanted to do is we wanted to go forward and so else L servo right servo right at 80 so what this means is go you know, relatively slowly forward at the speed of 80 we're going to then delay for 100 milliseconds uh, and then run through the loop again. Again, delay is one thing that you may want to play with. Um, if, you, if you run it too fast, uh, you may get some, some quirky issues with your vehicle. But remember, if you run it too slow, this loop will only go through uh, after this delay is done. So if you put this delay to 5,000, that's five seconds. So literally, it will do whatever you told it to do for five seconds until it rechecks the sensors uh, to, to fix whatever it's doing. Uh, so that's where, again, you want to take it down. Again, 100, 100 milliseconds, maybe 200 milliseconds, maybe 50 milliseconds. Have it down somewhere in that range because that's fast enough uh, that it will loop relatively quickly uh, without being so fast it causes you a few quirks. So that's basically all there is to this particular code. So then from here, you would upload it and then we're going to go over to my little demonstration area and I can show you how this works. So here we are. This is our little demonstration area. We've built the, uh, built the vehicle. We've got the three sensors on here. So I'm going to connect our little battery pack and let this thing do what it should do. So we're going to put it down. It's going to go forward. Then since when it hits the forward sensor, it's going to turn, right? So it turns. But see right there, see how it turned a lot quicker? 
When the side sensor detects something, you can see it goes a lot faster than when the, the forward sensor. So the forward sensor is going to detect, it turns. The side sensor, see how quickly that turns? And so now, basically, the vehicle understands not simply how to interact with things in front of it, but also interact when it detects anything from the side. And so you're not going to get the same problem with where we had with this vehicle before, when it only had one sensor and would kind of jam itself self up along the, the, the wall or an object. Now that's all there is to creating a little Arduino vehicle with an array of infrared proximity sensors. So with this, we had three sensors on there. It was very basic if, else, if, else, if, else statement, but you could have 10 different infrared sensors on here and get really complicated. You could add ands and ors and other things we'll talk about later. Also, this is using simply an array of infrared proximity sensors. As I've talked about before, you could also add ultrasonic distance sensors. You could add multiple sensors onto a vehicle like this so that all the different sensors can be detecting the environment and then based off of whatever you want to put into the code, you could then have the vehicle react. But basically, this is just a simple way to create one of these vehicles. And in the real world, this vehicle will work a lot better than a vehicle with simply one sensor. Because again, if this is going up along the side uh, of an obstacle, this can now detect it and then move away from it. If you're going to be doing this project, I highly recommend you go into the code and you tweak the speeds. So remember, not only is it uh, the the sensors detecting what's around it, but one of the things with how the, the vehicle will operate is the speed at which it will operate. So again, how fast do you want the left servo going? How fast do you want the right motor going? Do you want the left motor going while the right motor stops? Do you want both the left and the right motor continuing to move forward, but maybe the left motor moves faster than the right mover, the right motor? And so those are some of the kind of interesting things you can do to tweak with this project is go in there and change the settings for the motors and see how it works and then see what's best for this project and the environment that you're going to be putting into. Uh, that is one thing that I highly recommend that you do with this project is go in there and adjust the motor speeds and then see and then see how the vehicle operates there uh, with with uh, what you put in there so that's all there is uh, to this particular project as always i enjoy doing this video and i look forward to seeing you at the next one Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube.